So this is uh, my energy survey. So at the top, you've got the appliance. You've got how many watts the appliance uses, how many of the appliances you have. Multiply those two to uh, get the number of watts all of such appliances are consuming and how many hours are they on for uh, to give you um, the watt hours in the last column. So for example the inverter and always start with your inverter because people often forget the inverter is an appliance. The inverter, my inverter consumes 40 watts. <coughs> It's a high frequency inverter, consumes 40 watts. I've got uh, one of them. It's on for 24 hours a day, so it's 960 watt hours. Yeah. So that's pretty much the idea. And you do the same for all the appliances you've got. You can see in the list here, I've got inverter, light bulbs, fans, fridge freezer chest freezer, water dispenser, which I've been calling water cooler, some people call it water dispenser, um, and TVs. I've got uh, two smaller TVs hooked up to cable boxes, and I've got a larger one which we use quite occasionally. <coughs> Excuse me. Laptop, electric piano, and miscellaneous kitchen appliances which I have lumped together here because there is a rule in my kitchen in my house now that my wife has laid down which is that only one of these appliances can be used at a time so if you're using the microwave to warm some food use that uh, before you turn on the electric kettle if you're using the electric kettle finish using that before you turn on the blender so that at any one time because all these um kitchen appliances microwave is 1200 watts the electric kettle is 1800 watts the blender is about 750 watts the toaster is about you know 1200 watts so but by on average about 1500 one or the other being used of all these appliances and i have factored in that we use it for a cumulative per uh, time period of about 20 minutes a day and uh washing machine i've only put uh the cold cycle on uh, so we only use our washing machine on uh, cold cycles we <laughs> we don't use the hot cycles which is like effectively turning on uh, an electric heater or an iron or an electric kettle so we only use the cold uh, cycles and then of course there's the usual charging of uh, cell phones and iPads and uh, mp3 players etc so that's the appliance list in my house pretty much inverter light bulbs fans fridge freezer uh, and then a chest freezer water dispenser and, and so on and so on so that's the appliance and then you can see in terms of the watts that they consume it's there. So light bulbs consume about 21 watts. I've got about 15 of them. And they are on, on average, you know, the different ones come at different times. And, you know, but on average, they're on for about six hours a day each, which is about 1890 uh, watt hours. Um, fans. I've got ceiling fans and standing fans. And please, if you can, as much as possible, opt for ceiling fans because they're much more efficient they might consume slightly more energy than the small standing fans but they definitely consume less energy than the really big standing fans but they're more efficient than any standing fan so they're very good 75 watts mine i've got six of them there uh which is a load of 450 watts if they're all on at the same time i've figured out on average they're on for about 10 hours a day you know typically at night till morning you know um and some are not on at all, like the one in the guest rooms. So it all depends, but give and take about 10 hours a day, giving you 4,500 watt hours. Uh, you've got fridge freezer and chest freezer. That is how much they consume running. They consume much more than that to start. Um, but uh, once they're up and running, that is how much 
I have measured them to consume because remember I have been using a plug-in consumption meter I have one of each and interesting uh, I have mine on timers so that they only work for 18 hours a day come 11 p.m. all the way on to uh, 5 a.m. the the timer switches them off and they, they go off they rest but during these times nobody's opened the fridge nobody's there and you know it just works very well so uh, that is uh, the biggest consumer in my house and in most houses it's typically a fridge because it's on for just 24 hours or in my case 18 hours that is the freezer 3600 so those are big numbers there uh, moving on swiftly TVs uh, these are new generation uh, TVs with cable boxes and you can see with the LED televisions as well as their respective cable boxes they consume 40 watts you know on average I've got two of them working about eight hours a day to give 640 and then I've got um, a slightly uh, bigger TV uh, which is typically in the uh, which is usually in the living room uh, we typically don't watch that unless um, I want to watch some some football on the weekend or something um, and uh, 75 watts uh, it's just, and basically it's occasional use 150 um, and then you've got things like laptops, 60 watts, electric piano, 20 watts, uh, one of each. Uh, and the laptop is about four hours a day, electric piano about two hours a day. And you've got uh, the kitchen appliances there. And like I explained before, it is one or the other or the other or the other. No two are ever on at the same time. And it is very good because we need to be sensible about conserving energy. There you have it. Okay, on average, I'll, you know, cumulatively, I think these things are on about 20 minutes a day. I mean, how long does it take to boil a kettle? And how many times a day are you boiling a kettle or blending something that's not even every day? Microwave is only used to heat food, toaster, occasionally, you know, so, you know, but they are heavy consumers, 1,500 watts. Washing machine, like I said, cold cycles, 500 watts. Uh, I've got one of them. And I've put one hour because even if we do three loads a week on two hour uh, cycles, that's still less than uh, one hour per day. So I've put one hour there. So that's seven hours worth of washing machine every week, you know. Um, and then you've got all the miscellaneous things. I've just put 10 watts for that, you know, etc. Your watts are the unit of energy. A watt hours are therefore your unit of consumption, of electrical consumption. So you add all this up up to give you a total of 24,690 watt hours or 24.6 kilowatt hours if you like. I always build redundancy upon redundancy into any of my uh, calculations which is why I add an extra 5% headroom. Extra 5% headroom to all my appliances and usage and if I add that it will give you uh, it gives us 25,989 watt hours, which is 25.99, virtually 26 kilowatt hours per day. 26 kilowatt hours per day. So, this is the magic number. That is the number you need to know. That's the number we need because it is with this number we then uh, proceed to calculate and design a system, a solar system appropriate for your family needs. So it is this number that's going to tell us how many batteries you're going to need. It's going to tell us how many solar panels you're going to need. Uh, it's going to tell us pretty much, you know, uh, your solar setup. It's a very, very important number. This is your daily energy, electrical energy consumption figure. In my case, 26 kilowatts per day, which is, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not small consumption. Right, so there is a figure on this side here that I just want to bring your attention to. We're not going to talk about today. This is a sum of all the load, assuming every appliance you had was uh, effectively on, yeah, at the same time. So 
you have your watts and the number and there you have it so for example light bulbs 21 watts each five uh, 15 of them will give us a load of 315 watts in any given instant so in any given instant all these things all turned on together at the same time will give us 3950 watts that is your load 3.9 kilowatts and this number is very very important for when we're talking about there you have it inverter sizing okay so this this exercise is good to know how many panels you need how many batteries you will need what kind of system you'll need as well as actually how big an inverter do you need yeah so this these these are the so i hope that was helpful is um is uh, uh always um interesting going through these figures uh and that you've got a better understanding of what it is to do a home energy survey of your critical inverter dependent circuits okay